Greetings, explorers, and welcome to the expedition of a lifetime. We are about to uncover the lost ruins of Arnak. Unfold the game board and place the side of your choice on the table. For your first game, the rulebook recommends using the side with the bird temple. Separate the item, artifact, and fear cards into three separate decks. Shuffle the artifact and item decks and place them on their corresponding spaces. No need to shuffle the fear deck, as all those cards are identical. Put those cards in a face-up pile here. Place the moon staff in the card row like so. This will serve as a round indicator. Deal one artifact to the space to the left of the staff and five items to the spaces to the right. Mix up the idle tiles, randomly assign one to each of the sites on the island and place them face up accordingly. Then place another face down on all the sites in the level two region. In a game with two players, place blocking tiles on all the two boot spaces in the first region of the board. You'll treat these spaces as if they don't exist. In a game with three players, shuffle up the five blocking tiles and reveal three of them. Use them to block the spaces indicated and return the other two to the box. In a four-player game, you'll not need any blocking tiles. Stack a number of 11-point temple tiles equal to the number of players in its corresponding space. Then do the same for the two six-point spaces and the three two-point spaces. So in a three-player game, you'll have three temple tiles worth 11 points, six worth six points, and nine worth two points. Shuffle the research bonus tiles and deal out a number of them equal to your play account to the Lost Temple bonus space and put them in a face-down stack. Deal out one bonus tile to each of the bonus tile spaces for your play account, flip them face up and return any remaining tiles to the box. Place the supply board on the table and place all the resource tokens in piles in these areas. Shuffle the site tiles with the level 1 symbol on them and place them in a face-down pile like so. Then do the same with the site tiles with the level 2 symbol. Shuffle the guardians and place them in a face-down pile in between the two. Turn all the assistant tiles silver side face up and shuffle them into three stacks of four tiles each. All players then stack your magnifying glass atop your notebook on one of the starting spaces. Take one of the reference cards, place your player board in front of you, and set your archaeologists on it. Take the four basic cards of your color and two fear cards to form your starting deck. Shuffle them up and place them face down on your player board. Whoever most recently travelled somewhere they'd never been before gets the first player token and two gold tokens. The second player gets one gold and one compass. Third player gets two gold and a compass. And fourth gets one gold and two compasses. The game is played over a series of five rounds. At the start of each round, all players will draw up to a hand of five cards. The player with the first player token takes the first turn, and play proceeds clockwise from there. On your turn, you will perform one main action and any number of free actions. The main actions available to you are as follows. Dig at a site. Discover a new site. Overcome a guardian. Buy a card. Play a card. Research. And pass. To dig at a site, you must pay the travel cost on the space you want to send one of your archaeologists by discarding a card or cards from your hand with symbols that meet that travel requirement. Any travel value will pay for a boot, and aeroplanes will pay for anything. But motor cars and boats cannot be used to pay for each other. You can also hire a pilot by spending two coins, which will pay for any travel icon. And of course, all of this is detailed on your reference card.
Once the travel cost has been paid, move an archaeologist from your player board to that space. However, the space must be unoccupied. And if you've already moved both archaeologists to the island, this action is no longer available to you this round. Then, resolve the effect depicted at the site. A full key of icons can be found on the back page of the rulebook, and also on your reference card. At the beginning of the game, only the five sites in the first region of the island are available for digging. To unlock new sites, you must pay the discovery cost depicted for that region. Choose an undiscovered site and pay its travel cost to move an archaeologist from your player board to that space. You'll then immediately resolve the effects of the face-up idol token. Then flip it face down and place it on your player board. If the space has a face down idol as well, simply move the idol to your player board. The idols you claim when discovering new sites are each worth three points at the end of the game, but they also have an additional use. As a free action, you may move one of your idols onto the leftmost unoccupied idol slot on your board. Then choose one of the five effects to gain an instant reward. But while this is a free action, I suggest you use it wisely. Each empty idol slot at the end of the game will award you with additional points, so covering them does come with a cost. After you've claimed any idols from the site you're discovering, take the top site tile from the appropriate stack and place it on the board face up. Immediately resolve its effect, just as you would when digging a site that's already been discovered. In future rounds, anyone will be able to send an archaeologist to this site to dig without paying the exploration cost. However, upon discovery, a guardian will awaken to protect it. Draw the top tile from the guardian stack and place it face up atop the site. The guardian will do nothing to you immediately. But if you reclaim an archaeologist from a site with a guardian at the end of the round, you'll gain a fear card. To avoid this, you may use a main action to overcome a guardian at a site with one of your archaeologists. Pay the cost depicted at the bottom of the guardian tile and move the guardian tile next to your player board. You have now earned the guardian's respect and it has rewarded you with a one-time use boon as depicted on the top right corner. You may use the boon on one of your turns by flipping the Guardian face down. Whether you use the boon or not, each of the Guardians you overcome will be worth five points at the end of the game. Your starting deck is... Uh, fine, but you'll likely wish to improve it sooner or later. As a main action, you may purchase a new card from the card row by paying the cost indicated in the lower left corner. Cards to the right of the Moonstaff are items. When you purchase an item, the card goes to the bottom of your deck, meaning it will likely appear in your hand at the start of the next round. Cards to the left of the Moonstaff are artifacts. When you purchase one of these, move it to your play area and immediately resolve its effect. At the end of a turn in which a card has been removed from the card row, slide cards toward the Moonstaff so that the empty space is on the outside edge. Then refill it with a new card from the deck. If the deck is ever depleted, the card row simply does not refill. You'll start each round with five cards in your hand, and those cards have multiple uses. We've already mentioned that they can be used to pay travel costs, but you may instead choose to play a card face up to your play area to resolve the effect printed in the lower portion. If the effect has a lightning bolt printed next to it, this is a free action, and there is no limit to the number of free actions you may perform in one turn. If no lightning bolt is present, playing the card will expend your main action for the turn. If the card is an artifact that's made its way back into your hand, you'll also need to spend a tablet to resolve the effect. If there's any confusion about a card, check the appendix near the back of the rulebook. One particularly notable bit of iconography to tell you about, though, is this symbol. 
When you resolve this, you have the option to choose a card in your hand or play area to remove from your deck. This is good for removing undesirable cards from your deck, such as fear cards, and is often best for cards in your play area which have already been put to use for the round. Exiled items and artifacts go to their respective discard piles. Exiled fear cards simply go back to the fear deck, and exiled starting cards may safely be returned to the box. You may choose to use a main action to advance one of your research tokens along the research path. If your notebook is lower than your magnifying glass, you may choose to move either token. If not, your magnifying glass must advance first. Because, after all, you must first discover something before you can write it down. You may only move into a space that is connected to the space your research token is currently occupying. Pay the cost indicated on the pathway connecting them and advance your token. If the space has a research bonus tile, gain the bonus depicted on the tile and remove it from the game. Then gain the row reward for the research token you just moved. Don't worry about the points here though, that will only matter at the end of the game. And if you wish, you may claim the row reward before cashing in the bonus tile. This symbol will reward you with an assistant of your choice from atop one of the three stacks on the supply board. Place the assistant on one of the assistant squares of your player board, silver side face up. If the assistant has a lightning bolt, you may exhaust the assistant by turning it sideways to gain the effect printed in the silver area below their portrait at any time on your turn as a free action. If no lightning bolt is present, you'll have to use a main action on a future turn to do this. Assistants are generally only refreshed at the end of the round so you'll likely only have the opportunity to use their effect once per round. When you move your notebook to a row with this symbol, you may upgrade one of the assistants you've already recruited by flipping it to its gold side. This immediately refreshes the assistant and unlocks a more powerful version of their effect. You can see what the upgraded effect of an assistant will be in the small placard at the bottom of the silver section. When your magnifying glass reaches the top row of the research track, you have discovered the Lost Temple. Place your magnifying glass in the highest value empty space in this row. Look through the stack of bonus tiles and choose one to keep. Once you've discovered the temple, research actions that would advance your magnifying glass are instead used to explore it and claim one of the temple tiles. To do this, you must pay the cost for the stack of tiles you're claiming a tile from. The cost for a two-point tile is indicated directly underneath the stack upon which it sits. The cost for a six-point tile is the combination of the costs for both of the stacks below it. And the cost for an eleven-point tile is the combination of all three. The final main action available to you is to pass. When you pass, you'll finish your final turn for the round by performing any free actions you're able to. Then, your turn will be skipped for the remainder of the round, which will end when all players have passed. At the end of the first four rounds, each player simultaneously prepares for the next round by returning their archaeologists to their player boards. For each archaeologist you reclaim from a site with a guardian at this time, add one fear card to your play area. If you have any cards left in your hand, you may choose to either save them for the next round or discard them to your play area. Then shuffle all the cards in your play area and return them to the bottom of your deck. Refresh your assistance and draw cards until you have five in your hand. In the unlikely event that your deck doesn't have enough cards for a full hand, simply draw them all. Exile the two cards on either side of the moon staff, then slide it one space to the right. Refill the card row with some new artifact cards and pass the first player token to the left. Then begin the next round. At the end of the fifth round, you'll tally your points to determine the victor. 
Your research tokens will each score the number of points indicated on its row reward. Magnifying glasses that reach the Lost Temple earn the number of points indicated on their spaces. Each of your temple tiles is worth the number of points printed in the corner, and each of your idols, whether covering a slot or not, is worth three. Empty slots are also worth the number of points visible. Each guardian you overcame is worth five points, regardless of whether or not its boom was used. Each item and artifact card in your deck scores points according to the value in the lower right corner, and each fear card in your deck subtracts one point from your total. Whoever has the most points wins the game. And in the event of a tie, the player who reached the Lost Temple first wins. If no one reached the temple, the highest research score is the final tiebreaker. Once you've become comfortable with the basic version of the game, you'll find information on what changes when you use the Snake Temple side of the game board, as well as a solo variant for single-player games, in the last few pages of the rulebook. And that's how you play The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Hey, thanks for checking out BNB Tabletop, the home of the board and barrel. A live show every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific where me and my buddies play board games. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out. We like to keep things interactive with our buff and nerf house rules that allow you to influence the course of the game. And virtual bingo cards that could win you a free board game of your own. So do us a favor, do yourself a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ding that notification bell. Thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you Sunday night.